I did not expect for all of you guys to agree with me in my recent video about how hard it is to date. I was actually hoping for some advice, but apparently all of us, apparently all of us are on the same boat and there's just no men out here to date. And that just like leads me to the question of why? I know I'm picky as hell. Like every one of my friends say how picky I am and how it's just like, it's gonna get me nowhere and I get it. But I also know what I bring to the table. So I'm just like, you gotta be picky because I don't wanna settle and it's been this long, why would I settle? But what is it about these men out here that's causing all of us in the comment section to realize that we're all single? Doesn't that seem a little strange to everybody that there was so many people that were commenting that they were just single too and they have been for many years and it shouldn't be this hard, right? Like where are the good men? Also, the people in the comment section <clears throat> men that are giving us advice on why we're single because and then it like leads into something really rude and just like judgmental um you're the people we don't want to date why would it be funny for a bunch of women with the same mindset the same mentality to be single the idea of not changing your standards because it's settling, even though they haven't been working for you for this long, but you're just going to keep doing what's been failing because if you switch it up, you're settling. Why is that crazy? No, that's that actually sounds about right. Whatever standards you have are unrealistic because they clearly cannot be met, which is why you're single. But instead of reevaluating those standards, you dig deeper, okay? You dig in even more. Enjoy it. At the end of the day, we need to start supporting each other. We need to stop talking down on each other. We need to stop disrespecting each other. And we need to, and, and even if something like Diddy is going on, we need to stand behind. Even if he totally wrong, we need to stand behind that. Because who you trying to stand behind? Mm. Do you know your, your history? Mm. Though I love my people, I love human beings. If you can respect me, I'm going to respect you. And that's the end of the conversation. No, no, no bunny hopping, all right? No bunny hopping. My fiance is- What does that mean? <laughs> what, does that... what does that mean? Because stab it high, did he? Because of history? Listen, listen, and this is one thing I don't like about Dr. Ewa, okay? He's the type of guy that if you're a black man dating a white woman, but you've pumped $10 million into the black community, created 50,000 jobs, He's still gonna be like, but you're dating a white woman. You're still dating, but you're bunny, but you're bunny hopping though, right? You're bunny hopping. But you can be Diddy, who slaps black women, right? What we seen what he did to Cassie, we heard all those stories about what he did to Kim Porter, his ex-wife. But as long as he's not bunny hopping, you got Dr. Uma Johnson online defending him, talking about what are the charges. Last time I checked, there was like three charges. Okay, it was arson, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It was like arson, trafficking, and I don't know the other one. But there were like three charges. He's not black. Ah! Oh, no. no, don't you say that. Your fiance is what ethnicity? Does it matter if he's not black I, I to you? Beat you up, my <laughs> he's Caucasian, okay. and he's a, and he's a wonderful person. He's a wonderful human being, and he respects everybody. Okay, he not he doesn't believe it or not. A lot of these um humbled white people today who are not racist they're not even on all of that i, I really I'm don't sure believe your fiance has used the n-word before probably never around you he's used the n-word before but i'm not gonna say he hasn't but it's not he used that term with his like friends and his brothers Girl, right are you ex are you comfortable with a caucasian well, using the n-word at well, all it's like people are not using that word to degrade you like they did in the early 1900s and, and later. I mean, some are, the racists oh, will. So, so what you're saying is, when Caucasians use the N-word, and let's say N-word queen, when Caucasians use the N-word, it's no, it, now they're using the N-word in a positive way. No, I'm not saying, I listen, I've heard him say it before, and I've heard other white people say it before. And I kind of will just tell them like, listen. You heard your fiance use the N-word and how did you respond? I told him that it's not good for you. I said, if you use that term outside, you might get knocked the fuck out. And I, I, I educate him. We, like, we talk about these things. And I educate him. He's not going to understand it from a point of view of black people. 
he's not black and he gets called that by his by his friend how did we get here first of all and how did dr uma spin this in the positive okay because everybody in the comments was crucifying this woman not because of what she said about diddy well we got to stick by him no, 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 because she's dating a white man who says the N-word. How the hell did we get here? <laughs> I'm willing to wholeheartedly dedicate this time in my life in the pursuit of this family and husband thing because this will be forever and my career is not going anywhere. I can uptake my career a whole year later because that's when the next set of junior doctors would be starting. And so I made the decision to quit as a doctor for a whole year in order to find my husband. And when I say I really, really, really believed that finding my husband was going to be the outcome, I really, really, really believed finding my husband was gonna be the outcome. To the extent that when I was then offered to defer my job, to leave my job for a year, but still have the security of that same job in the next year without doing a whole reapplication to find a job as a doctor, I declined it. So embarrassing in the email written to the director of the deanery i wrote this time next year i will potentially be married i do not know where my husband will live and so in the best interest of my future husband i need to maintain geographical flexibility so thank you very much for the offer but i will quit and reapply such that I can reapply in a location that is desirable for my future husband. I'm such an idiot. Who gassed me into thinking that I was definitely going to come off of this married? Instead, I was there for a total of one week. I quit my job for a whole year to be part of this experience for one week and then eventually be dumped by the person that I really liked and then for me to ask the producers if I could just go home because... I liked someone they didn't like me back enough and so I felt for me that there was no point in being there for any more amount of time. Everything ended up working out and I had several backup options that I had lined up for myself prior to going. There was no real financial cost to me doing this, the only thing it really did was set me back in terms of my path as a doctor by one year. And so here I am now, still a doctor, on my way to do my night shift to cover the entirety of surgery. So that's a quick story. Um, bye. Nobody can tell me ever in life that a degree, that whatever job you're doing means that you're an intelligent person. I'm sorry. You might be intelligent in that field. You might be an expert in that field, but you can also be an absolute idiot. You quit, you as a doctor, Quit your job for a year to go and love his life? Oh my goodness gracious. This is what I'll be saying. I'll be having this debate with people. Oh, I got a first at university. That means I'm smart. No, it doesn't. This might be the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Like, firstly, okay? If you're a woman and you know marriage is important to you, why the hell would you go into a field in which in order to find a husband, you have to take a whole year off? That doesn't make sense within itself. Surely you pick a more flexible field or you find your partner before you enter said field. But then your idea to find a husband is to go on love is blind? Nah, this woman has to be trolling. This can't be serious. The internal pain after being sexually assaulted. I've seen enough. He done it. I've seen enough. So apparently, this is uh, Diddy's latest uh, victim. She's come out and done a press conference. She started crying within two seconds, okay? She thinking about that baby, yo. She's thinking about that man, Dango Warriors, that Diddy ordered straight out of Congo. Okay, she's feeling disgusted. Has been incredibly deep and hard to put into words. It goes beyond just physical harm caused by and during the assault.
it's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Some of the hardest parts of this pain are the shame and the guilt I have experienced that plays a negative part. Because you already know Diddy was sitting in a corner, okay? He had his camcorder out recording the whole thing. So fed up with her. Why? What happened today? Why did I get a call from your teacher that you did something to somebody in your classroom? It's because she said my hair looks like ramen noodles. And when you do that, I you don't expect me to say nothing. You to cut her hair with scissors? Her mom said she was crying. So? <laughs> did you see this? Oh my goodness gracious. Combined with the attitude, this is such a bad reflection on it. You shouldn't have even posted this. Because whoever's the parents in this situation, this is such a bad reflection. Your kid's acting like this? You do not always have to act out of anger. Yes, I do. You're going to get your iPad taken away. Stop it with the hand. See, this video doesn't go out to the mom trying to talk to her daughter about why she cut the little girl's hair. It doesn't go to her because obviously you're not doing your job. By the way she, her demeanor is, the way she responded to you telling her why you cut this little girl's hair and all the... This message doesn't go to you because you're not doing your job, okay? This message goes to the mom of the little girl whose hair got cut. I need you to do me a favor and I need you to call the police and I need you to file a report. And I also need you to press charges because see these parents out here aren't teaching their children. They're not parenting their children. And I know I've said this God knows one too many times on my page now, which is kind of why do I got to keep fucking saying this? But there are too many people in this world who like the idea of having children, but do not want to parent. This is one of them. Because I promise you if my daughter would have come home or I would have got a call from the school and they would have told Also, it has to be some of this gentle parenting nonsense. Because gentle parenting, in my opinion, is just as bad as like the super extreme people who have their kids on lockdown and give them no free space. It's just the complete opposite. Like we're not friends. You're not on my level. I'm not talking to you like uh, you're on my level. Every two seconds I go, oh, consider your feelings, consider your feelings. Brother, listen, I am the authority okay you listen to me you told me your daughter decided to put her hand scissors on my daughter whether it's her hair or any other part charges because if you're not going to teach her a lesson the justice system can because there is no way in 2024 we are still allowing this type of behavior and then allowing the she <laughs> no that's poor fucking behavior and if you don't want to call the police that's fine I because see, this is my thing. I understand you don't want to call the police that's somebody's child, but at the end of the day, if I had even the slightest bit of confidence that the child who cut my daughter's hair was gonna go home and get adequately punished, then I would leave it alone. But unfortunately, too many parents are trying to be their children's friend and sticking up for them and, oh, my daughter could never, it was a mistake. She's sorry, she didn't mean it that way. I don't give a fuck anymore. You guys are making too many excuses for your children and their poor bass behavior. And I today, personally, in my age, I'm the same size as a middle schooler, all square up. You understand? So you do you. But if it was me personally, I think if, if you don't want to call the police, then I would, um, I would say an eye for an eye in this sense. Mama should have been cutting somebody hair that day. Anyways, if you disagree, I don't really give a fuck. Have a day. I totally agree. And the reason why they don't want to hold their children accountable, because again, it's a reflection on them. If your children are acting up, you're a parent. Like you look bad. You know what I'm saying? I've said this before. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people will have the same experience. When me and my mom used to go out when I was a kid, before we go out, she'd sit down and she'd say, if you dare embarrass me in public today, big problems for you. Because me doing something stupid is a reflection on her. I want all women to understand this. All these women in the comment section, Oh, but my husband, not my man, not my man. My husband is different. He's such a wonderful person. I cannot believe I get to be with him. He's just amazing. He does everything. Man, slow down. I don't care who he is. I don't care if he's the most wonderful man on planet Earth. I don't care if he's Jesus himself. I don't care if he funds your whole life. I don't care if he pays for everything. I don't care if he does everything right. 
we are living in patriarchy, where men are the ones who decide. Men set the rules. Men get to do everything they want and get away with it. I don't care if he's the most wonderful person. It's absolutely irrelevant. You have no idea of the invisible, emotional, mental labor that you're going to have to burden yourself with. He's feminist, man. I love my husband. He's perfect. He's great. You don't know. You don't know the mental toll that you're going through. It's because you don't know. I'm here to tell you how you feel because you don't know the mental toll that you're going through because we live in patriarchy. When you get married or you're in a relationship with a man, you have zero ideas of what men do to just be in presence of another woman. You have no idea how important and crucial it is for them and for their egos to be surrounded by women. The slightest look, the slightest compliment, years of confidence for them. Year, they power through. Just a little bit, just a little hint. Let alone being married to this person, living with them, funding their entire life with your intellectual capital, with your energy, with your femininity, with your emotions, with your time. Are, are, you, are you serious right now? The labor is yours. I don't care in what situations you are. I don't care. He's going to be the winner. You're going to be the loser. Even if he does everything for you. Because this is how the system is planned. It must be so draining to have to operate like this. No matter what men do, no matter what your comments say, no matter what the experiences of other women, you must believe that men are bad, inherently bad, because we live in patriarchy, where men succeed and women fail. So being as feminists like to lump all men into one category, I have a question for the feminists. There was once a time, not too long ago, maybe like 200 years ago, where white women owned black slaves. Now, you're looking at that in that context and you'd say, hmm, well, women clearly had privilege over men, right? Because white women owned black men. There was a time period. Being as women are now less privileged than men, what happened? What happened to change that? during that time period? And have we gone backwards because women are now less privileged when once upon a time they were more privileged? I'd love to get their thoughts and opinions. I wrote a story called My Daughter's a Bitch and It's Not My Fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was nine. <laughs> oh, and I said I wasn't gonna cry. I know, it hurt me too. Her sister followed her around everywhere, loved her, loved her, loved her, and is he didn't want anything to do with her and it broke my heart because I'm a little sister. I recognize that was definitely the worst thing. I can like feel the science in there. It was the worst thing I ever, but it also, if you read it, I was really good at clickbait titles. But it blew and up. No, it just, it's just something that, that comes up when you like, when you Google my name, oh, you might be able to find it. But it still follows you around. Like you're yeah, because... applying for jobs, or you're doing things. And <laughs> right. with your name. We can't <laughs> hire her. She was a bitch when she was nine. Writing a book about your daughter being a B word, even if it was clickbait. That's crazy. She must have a mental illness. Like there's no other explanation. Because for a whole grown woman to be writing a book about her daughter who she's raising, whatever your daughter is at nine, you're responsible as a parent. I, I don't even know. This liquor got me get my zone Now I'm blowing up your phone Blowing we smoke in the ozone I just can't let this go This liquor got me in my zone Now I'm blowing up your phone Blowing we smoke in the ozone I just can't let this go Girl, if I'm 
doing too much, just let me know 